This story is fascinating. Confronting racism within, racism within the press. This is from the Columbia Journalism, Journalism Review. I really appreciate the story. And I think there's a lot of things being said about the representation of the media to the regular people out there. This is what it comes down to. Look at the people who are privileged, high status, got a lot of money. The media, many. Is it a proper makeup of real life of people that you see every day in your neighborhood or in your world? Is it really a proper representation? No, of course not. You know this. And I'm going to explain to you why. So let's go and look at the story. So on Wednesday, as I record this show, this is just a couple days ago, nine days after police killed George Floyd, uh, the protest started and Glamour Magazine heard from eight women journalists of color. Uh, CNN's Abby Phillip, Aaron Haynes of the 19th, and Marissa Evans of the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Uh, the journalists spoke about reporting while black. They described the physical threats and emotional trauma they covered in moments like this, the need for self-care, and the long-term media industry biases that hindered their work, including racist notions of objectivity and colleagues ignoring black reporters' concern about expertise. And expertise, excuse me. Very interesting point here because I could tell you, listen, I see a lot of, you can see the, 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 the racial makeup, you can see the status of the people within a newsroom. I know because I worked in several newsrooms before. And the truth is, if you look on TV, it's only right now where you actually see various ethnic or changed up of people on TV. Right now you're starting to see the evolution of television where more women are on television in front of it's MCs or news anchors and things like that. Because back in the day, it was always two older older white guys who were on news. That was it for, it was for years. Remember, it wasn't that long ago that we had, you know, Peter Jennings, Dan Rather, Tom Brokaw. It was like that for years. And before that, we had Walter Cronkite. Before that, we had Douglas James. Or after that, we had John Chancellor. It was how it was. I'm not saying it was bad. That's just what it was. It's the way of the times. Now, Lester Holt, Nora O'Donnell, and David Muir. Representation is different. And you have Hispanic representation. You got, you know, Tom Yamas. Uh, you got Jose Diaz Pilar that's over at uh, NBC, things like that. So you get the change right there. But again, the big, powerful media sources. And don't tell me about the ones like, okay, uh, Don Lemon, uh, you know what? He's been around there for a long time. And, you know, it's just like, I don't see him as a representation. And I don't think I don't think the black community looks at him as a representation personally. I don't look at him as that. I don't think he relates. Again, the people that are out of touch, not relatable, not at all. I think the one person that's in there was a uh, oh, what was it Victor Blackwell, who works on Saturday mornings. I think it is. He used to work here, work in, in my neighborhood, neck of the woods, where I worked at a Channel Twenty Five, WPBF, back in the day. But the thing is, also, I look at other metro cities, and you see. A diverse makeup of ethnicities and race. I mean, really, ethnicities of male and female, and there's a big difference. I look at one of the stations I love down in Miami, Channel 7, it's also well represented. I see a lot of different makeup. You see a proper representation of the city that you live in. But when you're looking at Washington, D.C., and you're looking at all the anchors that work for that, or all the anchors that work in New York, local news, different story. But when you're looking at the national news, it's all, it's very whitewash. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it is true. Let's just call it what it is. It's what it is. And so you see certain people that are coming on and you're like, let's bring on some people that actually know what they're doing. I mean, listen, you know, you got to have people that are not out of touch. Sorry, Don Lemon, Joy Reid, Al Sharpton, they're out of touch. I don't know what they're talking about. Out of touch people that do have any in touch. You know, they want to bait, they want to bait people that go you know, do the outrage. They follow along the company line like everybody else. And the stories that should be talked about that these women are talking about, they're not going to get covered. And the perspectives are not going to get covered either. And the truth is, I talk about this about movies. I would like to see proper representation. If there are stories to be told, why retell the same stories or remake and rehash movies and put them over again? Retool, remake, rehash. You know, sequel, sequel, sequel. No, no, no. Let's see different stories. There's a lot of different ethnicities, different cultures, different diversity. I want a diverse makeup. I want a proper representation of what it is. 
We should just have people that look like what we are. Local news does a better job, but the national, the establishment media, no, not at all. It's true. Just look at who you have on TV now. Just look. The ones that are anchors, the ones that are actually running the news, that are paid the big salaries, they are all out of touch. Almost all of them are out of touch. Back to the story. Quote, there's only so much harm to black people that I can see in the field through a lens or on a screen before I begin to feel that I'm unraveling. Antonia Hilton of the NBC News said, I wake up, quote, anxious, not just about what might happen in the news, but also the private worries that I might have to find a way to compartmentalize or suppress in order to do my job. So, again, I can understand there's a, <clears throat> obviously there's a, a culture gap, if you will, a status gap because of the stories that, well, you know, key, these people that are out of touch that are the editors-in-chief, because by the way, if you want to look at the proper representation of who's in charge, how about the, the, the management of all these networks? <laughs> Let me tell you, no proper representation. And it shouldn't be that. It's that people are held back. They talk about a glass ceiling for women. There's a glass ceiling for a lot of people. If you're not Ivy League educated or Harvard educated or coming from some particular background that gives you status, prestige, that's the one thing that happens is that certain people are brought to. It's like Jen, John Lago will talk about the Fresh Air Fund. Oh, we'll bring these underprivileged kids along board. Oh, come along, come along. We'll put you on for the, put you up for the summer. No. No even handouts. If you know people that perform that do well, then let them move forward. That's what I say. So now the story continues on, and I just want to move on and say, okay, newsrooms are still nowhere diverse enough. And this is Brian Stelter that says this from CNN who I mostly think is just, I mean, his idea of media bias is like so off. That's one of the most off the wall, completely disconnected people that there is in media. And he's a media analyst. He, no. Him and Oliver Darcy, throw him away. But here's the thing. He does make a point here. Newsrooms are not diverse, particularly in the upper ranks, and that top editors too often make major mistakes when it comes to covering race. It's not mistakes. They don't cover anything at all. And if they do, they cover it in some, some dynamic or some angle that doesn't even make sense. All these town halls are going to keep putting up. They're not even going to come up that make sense. And the people they're going to bring on, they're going to bring on probably people that are going to just be with some narrative or agenda that fits for that network. Because they want to make sure they get ratings. It's not they're doing some public service. Bullshit. They're doing this for ratings, for revenue. If they couldn't scare the shit out of you with coronavirus, they're going to use this. And they are. It's not even a question right now. So now, Alexis Johnson, who works for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, uh, wrote an unsigned editorial comparing the use of the word racism and McCarthyism. And they... So again, she's a black reporter of the paper from covering protests in the city after she posted a perfectly innocuous tweet that editors consider to be biased. The union that represents the Post-Gazette staffers notified as members of Johnson's treatment demanded that she be reinstated to protest coverage and suggested that the union would pursue so far unspecified legal action. If you have to go ahead and if you have to go ahead and put legal action against media, you're just doing what everybody else does because everybody else gets slandered and libeled all the time. And the truth is, the journalistic shield on some of those things should be you know, changed around as well so that anybody that is not reporting right and you're getting bias out there and you're getting improper reporting and no retractions, damn right you sue them. Absolutely. Those are the kind of things that are going on. Now, there's other things they talk about here, but here's one more thing I want to bring up in this story. Far too many people and powerful people in the media approach racism as a bias or one side of an argument rather than as a condition of life. Newsrooms will remain overwhelmingly white, and that comes at a cost of the quality of coverage. So in the glamour piece, Haynes, who has worked, worked for Columbia Journalism Review, talks about the importance of the race beat, address what a dearth of black voices means for journalism. Quote, this is not just about our feelings. This is about telling the most transparent truth we can about America. One of the tenets of journalism is to afflict the uncomfortable. Well, white people are too comfortable in America. Why just people of status? So I don't put white people because there are a lot of people that are rich, a lot of people that are privileged, a lot of people that are successful. But they're not philanthropic, 
and all they do is take, 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 and don't give, give, give at all. And I don't expect you to go and give everything that you make. No, but reinvest. That's, that's actually good, proper career building advice. You always reinvest in back what you were doing. You know, it's just like when you go to college, you give back to your school. You want other students like you to succeed. That's what I do. And then when I'm talking about like other charities and other, you know, causes, you know, if I can volunteer, if I can donate to a cause that's actually going to go somewhere and do something, that's what I would do. That's just saying. But I'm a lonely YouTuber, podcaster, you know, does this. I can only do so much. I'm looking for support myself. So I'm trying to scratch my own back. And there's only so much I can do to scratch somebody else's back. Just saying. And if we're not pointing out that and showing people the disparities and being honest and clear about those disparities, then things are not going to be different. Absolutely right. The point is, is that we get all this coverage. Okay, coronavirus, and that's all they can talk about. If they want to go and bash the president, that's all they want to talk about. Because it's ratings, it's revenue, that's what matters. But you know what? All these different newscasts, you get 24-hour news cycles. You're telling me you can't take time on stories that matter, that really matter. Talk about world news, what's going on around the world that actually does affect us. How about talking about news that actually affects people? Because all you're trying to do is affect people with rage and with fear. That's what the media does. And I support journalists that want to go and represent what America really is, a complete fabric of people that hopefully someday are going to be all considered with equal rights. And I like that they're nonconformists. I like that they're actually not doing what all the other journalists are made to do, the same bullshit stories. No, no, please tell the story and tell it right. 